I'm stupid. You're smart. I was wrong. You were right. You're the best. I'm the worst. Mark Zinno, you're very good looking. (laughs) I am not attractive. And yes, the New York Yankees are in the World Series and the Cleveland Guardians are not. So for my punishment, I must heap, quote, effusive praise on you all week. And and there you go. As I quote, happy to start the show. I think it's a great way to start the show. I feel, feel really, feel really, really, really good about it. Uh, you look good. Soto's a bad man. John Carlos Stanton is not human. And you got beat by two guys. That's it. That's it. So. You, you know what's unfortunate about the series, besides the, well, in addition to the part that the Guardians lost, is that, mm-hmm. A, I knew they were going to lose the series. I told you in the second inning, I texted you the Yankees have won the series. The second inning of game one, for the record. Yes. And it the, game, the series went exactly like I thought. Like, the Guardians did just enough to give you hope in most of the games. But at the end of the day, the Yankees, who have better players, saw those very good players hit home runs when they needed them, and that's why they won the game, the series. Um, by cool. the way, you forgot the heap of use of praise before you started speaking, so we'll put a penny in the jar. Uh, but that said, blame your manager, because why he pitched to John Carlos Stanton with first base open um, when Stanton hit the two-run bomb to tie it is just derelict managing. Just there's no reason. There was no reason to pitch to him there, none. If you were our manager, I'm sure you would have done an intentional walk because you're very smart. Yes, thank you. Okay, good. A few surprises. Okay. Going. Let's go to Monday Night Football. Enough about baseball. The World Series is not until Friday because Rob Manfred, well, he's not very smart. But uh, we have two Monday Night Football games to discuss on the program. By the way, the show, okay, we are still on a 44-25 and 25 overall run. We are going to cover both Monday Night Football games here. Mark, you were 5-0. and oh. Uh, with your half of the double play last week because you're a brilliant individual. So please allow the fine people to know the prop you are going with here in the Chargers-Arizona game. I also have a prop in this game coming up. We'll get to that, though, in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, um, the the Cardinals took a little money here, um, which sort of leads me to believe that uh, they may win the game. Uh, And it it is kind of – I'm sorry, the Cardinals took a little money which leads me to believe they may win the game here. I mean, get, the line was open at three, maybe two and a half. It's not down to one and a half. Um, Chargers are a road favorite for the second straight week. But, you know, uh, I always look to mobile quarterbacks to uh, look at their rushing prop. And Kyler Murray is a guy who takes off often. Uh, if you look at his five games this year, in four of the five, he's rushed at least five times. In four and three of the five, he's gone over this number of 32 and a half. In fact, he's gone over 40 um, in three of the five. The two games he didn't, the Cardinals were on the wrong end of being blown out, which never leads to a quarterback running um, because they're losing the football game and they got to get the ball down the field quickly so they throw it more. I don't believe that the Cardinals Cardinals will be on the wrong side of a blowout here. In fact, I don't believe anything about this game will be a blowout on either side. I think it's going to be a tight game all the way around. And with that said, yeah, I uh, I feel like this is a spot where the uh, the Cardinals and Kyler Murray he'll do a lot with his legs. So uh, I think there's two ways to do it. But I'm going to look at his rushing yards. I, I think you could look at his rushing attempts at five and a half because remember kneel downs count as a rushing attempt. So if the Cardinals are winning this thing and are in victory formation, that little knee counts as a rushing attempt. Um, that always helps you. But Again, Murray has gone in, in uh, sorry, five of his six games, he's gone at least five rushes. He's gone over this total in four of his six games. I think Murray goes over 32 and a half here. Uh, again, this is a defense with the Chargers that tends to get after a little bit. So they have good pass rushers. Murray will do it himself. Over 32 and a half for Kyler Murray for my half of the double play. Okay, smash that like button. If you're in agreement with Kyler Murray over his rushing yard prop, why would you not? Smash that like button because Mark Zinno gave that out, and he was 5-0 and with his half of the double play last week. I, on the other hand, was an atrocious 0-5 last week. Uh, I did not have a good LCS on or off the betting board. My back hurts. I was carrying you all week long. My back hurts. You were. You were. You were carrying. You've, 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 car- you've, protect- you've protected me. You've protected this country. You've done so many things in life. Anyway... Let's talk about, uh, let's look at the other team and a rushing prop. I'm going to look at J.K. Dobbins and go over his rushing prop, the Chargers running back. Mark, this is a very interesting game. Uh, Let me just go on this diatribe real quick here about the total for this game because you and I have talked before about the Cardinals and when they're involved, it's over or pass for me when playing a game total. 
because their offense since Murray returned last year has been top 10 in the league in most metrics. But their defense, I still have question marks, particularly against the run. And what do the Chargers do? Okay, what are they? They're looking to establish the run, particularly with Dobbins. Now, they don't have a mobile quarterback. We know Justin Herbert isn't going to run wild. So why do we want to focus on Dobbins uh, in, in the rushing prop market here tonight? Well, the Cardinals' last three opponents have all run for over 150 yards. As a matter of fact, let's go back even further and see if we can make that even more games uh, where the opponents... Yep, uh, four straight opponents have gone over 150, three of them going over 180. And then the Rams were the only the Rams were the only team that did not get 150 rush yards against this Cardinals defense this year. So if the Chargers, who like to run the ball a lot, you expect to see the feature back go over his rushing prop, which is just 77 and a half. I, I, the, the way this card, I mean, they they just run, run, and run some more. Mark I, J.K. Dobbins is going to have success. He's going to get the the requisite number of touches, and I don't think this is a particularly big number for a guy who is, you know, certainly capable. He's rushed for at least 96 in three of the five games he's played. So why not go over 77 and a half, J.K. Dobbins? Why not? No, listen, and, and just here's the thing about this game tonight. Like, have you taken a close look at the Chargers schedule this year? Like, just, just not take, recently. take a gander at the quality of opponents they've played. Are, are you ready for the level of quarterbacks that they've played this year? Let's go with Gardner Minshew, uh, Bryce Young, Justin Fields, Bo Nix, and Patrick Mahomes, who runs a Kansas City offense that's not good. Like, objectively, folks, the, the Chiefs' offense is not good, and Mahomes has a negative touchdown-to-interception ratio this year. Like, they have faced nobody. Of, this is the best offense they've faced all year long, the Chargers. Yeah. By a margin. Yeah, and and by, you by know, a wide margin. Go, go, going back to when I w was discussing the total briefly there, uh, Mark, you, you, your point was is well taken, obviously. But um, Arizona, where it's over or past, the highest scoring Chargers game this year was 39 total points. Yes, that was this last week. This is the NFL. Yeah, this is the, the NFL in 2024. And a team has gone five games and none of them have seen 40 total points. You talk about this Chargers schedule here. We're getting, you, we're, we're, you know, kind of making a hard right turn. Deviating, and going, yeah, I know. But still, it's worth it. We're deviating it's here, but but still, look, look at the rest of the Chargers schedule after this game. They're playing New Orleans, who's going to have Spencer Rattler, who's terrible. Cleveland, who will have Jameis Winston, and Tennessee with Mason Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Did they pay off Roger Goodell? What is this schedule? I mean, the, 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 and again, I mean, just the next good quarterback that they face will be week 11. It's Burrow is Burrow, and then they get the, the Ravens in Week 12. But after that, they get Kirk – well, they get – there's actually a run there of Burrow, yeah. Lamar, Kirk Cousins, Patrick Mahomes again, and then Baker Mayfield, if you believe he's a good quarterback. I'm not sure that I necessarily do. But then they finish with three cupcakes again uh, with Denver, New England, and Las Vegas. Like, folks, you know, it, let's just throw this out there because we like giving out stuff to the audience, and I may just go look for this right now. Chargers to make the playoffs feels like a really good bet right now. Yes. And the AFC is weak. Think about it. The New York Jets are playing themselves out of it. I mean, you, I think it's going to be the same four division winners in the AFC this year. Buffalo, Baltimore, Houston, Kansas City as last year. But the wild cards, I mean, name me three teams that are better than the Chargers. You, you get Pittsburgh, maybe. Uh, and Pittsburgh, their schedule yeah. gets really hard. So I think the Chargers can finish above them. But after that, the only teams with positive point differentials are Cincinnati. I know you hate Cincinnati. Denver? Bo Nix? The Chargers yeah. are making the playoffs. I agree. They're making the playoffs. I, I mean, it's, 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 worth, it's worth a look, folks. Okay, we digress. Sorry. But just, you know, let's right. just bring it up. Yeah. Um, real quick here before we get to our show, best bet, that's going to be on the other game, Baltimore-Tampa Bay. Mark, I could praise you, you know, it, it, all day long. But why don't you talk about uh, what a good weekend you had at wagertalk.com and what you've got available uh, for Monday. Yeah, uh, it was a very good weekend. Um, six and two overall, swept the board in college. Uh, it was a very good weekend. So if you guys jumped in, including, oh, by the way, our $5 play that I gave out on Tuesday of Cincinnati, 4% best bet that cash. So that was good. Um, so we'll try to keep it rolling tonight. We'll have a play in the Monday night game. I might have a play in both Monday night games. But well, with no baseball, no basketball, we'll definitely have at least one play uh, for Monday night. And, of course, we gave out the, uh, the Kyler Murray. Free play here of over 32 and a half yards. So go to wt.buzz slash MZ and uh, 
and go grab it today. The man mentioned basketball. Yes, the NBA season tips off to Tuesday. That is tomorrow. Wow. That's uh, nuts. Life That's comes nuts. at you fast. Uh, I also won my $5 play over the weekend. It was on Oklahoma State plus 10. So Joe Ranieri, uh, you know, I, I can desperately try to stay at his good graces. Uh, overall, college football has been great. 12-2 and two last 14. NFL was just a 2-2 two and two split on Sunday. The Cleveland Browns, Zinno. Uh, a disgraceful effort, really. Uh, I, you know, yeah. I don't want to say if if Watson I, I would have stayed in. I just, I, God, I just, look, Cincinnati. And I don't hate Cincinnati. I just told everybody from the beginning of the year how bad they were going to be, and you all thought I was freaking nuts. Okay, I said it here. I said it on multiple national outlets that the Bengals not only wouldn't make, wouldn't make the playoffs, that they had the worst roster in the division. They would finish last in the division, and if Cleveland wasn't so freaking inept. They absolutely would be last in a division. That said, it's not a good football team, period. And their coach sucks. Zach Taylor is an abortion of a coach. He's terrible. So when you when you have to return the opening kickoff for a touchdown to win a football game, you don't deserve to win that football game. And the Bengals didn't deserve to win that football game. And the Browns should have covered it. Everything that we thought about the Browns going into that game, covering it, should have happened. See, that's the way. Uh -oh. There we go. Thank you. There we, there we go. We have we have someone who would like to connect uh, with his. I'm sure, he was on, on the bank. on the AFC North. All right. Um, anyway, I think he focuses on baseball. Anyway, uh, Mark Zitto. What's his record? I heard it was pretty good. You know, I check think it's, was it? Stop it. Stop it. Okay, just stop it. Leave, leave people. Well, there you go. What's her record? Uh, uh, any hot dogs? Undefeated. Did she defeat Joey Chestnut? Uh, is, is he allowed back in the contest? Anyway. All right, Zeno. Um, let's go to our show best bet because that's what the people tune in for. Baltimore and Tampa Bay. It looks like everyone's expecting a shootout here, Mark. The total has gone all the way yeah. up to what fifty and a half now. It's yeah. some some shop where the DraftKings is showing fifty and a half. We are going to punch back at the market, but we are going to punch back in the market in a way uh, that we're just focusing on the first half. Yeah. Well, number one, you know I love cutting games in half if I can because uh, it's the Brian Power philosophy. At least I don't have to stay up late, right? That's that's number one reason <laughs> we've got the game in half, because we can get to bed early. Um, but, you know, so, sometimes cutting a game in half takes out some of the variance. Uh, sometimes it adds a little bit more, but sometimes I think it cuts it out. This is a case where I think it cuts it out. Look, um, if you look at Baker Mayfield's numbers this year, they've been pretty me mediocre, except for the two games where the Buccaneers were able to blow out their opponent in the Eagles game and last week in the Saints game. Do we believe that Tampa Bay is going to be able to blow out the Ravens? I say, how about no? Nope. That's not going to happen. So as bad as the Ravens' pass defense is, and oh, by the way, folks, in case you haven't been paying attention, no team gives up more passing yards per game in the NFL other than the Baltimore Ravens. It is not a good pass defense. But still, I don't know that the Tampa Bay offensive line is going to be able to keep Mahomes upright and clean. Uh, I'm sorry, not Mahomes. What I say? Mayfield, Mayfield rather. Keep him upright and clean. And they have absolutely no running game. Tampa has no running game. Brian Power no. and Mark Zeno would make for a better backfield than what Tampa Bay has for trying to trot out there each week. <laughs> because Rashad White and Bucky Irving, I think their combined rushing yards propped together is under 60. Like, that's how little of a rush running game. It is an impotent, Viagra-needing run game. It needs a little blue pill. So if they can't run and they have to pass, guess what? Ravens are going to be coming at them all game long. Uh, and I, I also don't like laying points on the road here with the Ravens. Um, Tampa can stop the run. Vita Vey playing Brian Powers. Vita Vey in this game. Last time I checked, he was healthy. Yep, he's good. Okay, well, Tampa's got a great run defense. So the Ravens will get checked a little bit up front here. Uh, I, I just think there's, there's a notion that all of a sudden these teams are going to score. And I, I don't believe that to be the case. So you and I love going counter. We love fading the public. Uh, we'll take the first half under 24 and a half which makes four scores what they have to get, right? It's either three touchdowns, mm -hmm. and a, even three touchdowns and a field goal would make it five five scores. But four touchdowns, anything less than that, we, we should be good here. So uh, I like under 24 and a half here. Let's fade what the public is doing and, uh, and go under that number for the first half. Um, you know, there's no need for me to follow such a, a beautiful and eloquent them, breakdown such them, as that. You. Just tell them the <laughs> philosophy, BP. The philosophy. If it ain't going under early, it, it ain't, ain't going under early. late. That's right. So there you go. And, it's and, not going under early. It's and, not going under late. But to that point, okay, something you, you talked about Baltimore and the passing yardage 
allowed. A lot of that's in the fourth quarter. Their defense. He, I, look, yeah. I know. I know everyone talks about the loss of uh, Mike McDonald, and, and that certainly is a big deal for that Baltimore defense this year. Uh, now the head coach in Seattle. However, uh, you know it, it had been an issue for the Ravens going back several years that, that, that they, you know, giving up, you know, blowing leads in the fourth quarter. So I think focusing on the first half with the unders, absolutely the right call. That is our show best bet. Smash the like button if you agree. Comment down below with your favorite bets for Monday Night Football. A Monday Night Football doubleheader. Not really a doubleheader it's because they're, the games are going on simultaneously. There's two games. That There you go. And that they are the only two games on the board tonight as the World Series is on hiatus. The NBA uh, starts tomorrow. Uh, we'll be talking college football and the NBA the rest of the week. <laughs> I don't think we're talking anymore. I think that's what that means. We gave you one. We did. Yes. All right. Subscribe to the Witch Talk YouTube channel, everybody. We'll see you Tuesday. Let's catch the tickets. <laughs>